Welcome to this video lecture discussing magnification. Um, so far in this topic, you guys have been learning about, um, you know, what are some of the characteristics of life, <clears throat> how do cells interact, um, what are some different ways that they demonstrate the properties of life, etc. So we are going to be doing a lab where you investigate um, paramecia and chlorella cells. Paramecium is a small um, single-celled organism. It's an aquatic organism, and it is a eukaryote um, or an animal cell. And chlorella is also a eukaryote, but it is a plant-type cell, so a photosynthetic cell that contains chlorophyll. You guys will be using a light microscope to investigate um, some of the properties of life of these cells and how they function, how they behave under certain situations. Um, in addition to this, you're going to be calculating the magnification of these structures and of drawings of other structures. So before we get to our investigation, we need to learn how to actually calculate magnification. The real simple definition of magnification is the number of times larger an image is than the specimen. Um, and when we're talking about cell biology, more often than not, we do need a microscope to even see the cell at all. Um, the human ovum or the human egg cell is actually one of the largest cells and that is visible um, to the naked eye just barely but to see any of the structures within the cell or even to see most cells a microscope is required. In class we have access to light microscopes um, Ours can magnify up to a thousand times. Some light microscopes can magnify up to two thousand times. Um, there are other microscopes such as electron scanning microscopes that can magnify up to five hundred thousand times um, and have better resolving power. And resolving power is the ability to distinguish between two things that are very close together in a magnified image. Um, so for a light microscope, you're going to be able to see more detail and, of course, much greater magnification. However, in order to use an electron scanning microscope, the specimen has to be coated in some type of metal, some type of hev heavy metal, such as gold or possibly carbon. And, of course, this does um, kill the organism and in some ways alter what you see. So we are going to be using light microscopes. Um, when we use our compound light microscopes, the magnification of both lenses is what we're going to be looking at. So the viewing lens magnifies 10 times, and then the additional lens will magnify, um, you know, up to 100 times. So then you take 10 times 100 to get your total magnification. Now, if you are given information about magnification, we have two... Um, equations that you're going to be using to calculate either the magnification of the image um, or the actual size of the specimen. So these are our two um, equations that you'll be using. The first is to calculate specimen size when you're given the size of the image or when you measure the size of the image and you're given magnification. You may have to um, reorganize this equation if you're you know not given magnification and you're solving for magnification or whatever else. And then the other is for a situation where you are given a scale bar. So in this case, scale refers to what the bar actually represents and scale size refers to the actual length of that bar. So you take a ruler and you actually measure that bar. Um, again, specimen size is going to be the actual size of the specimen and size of image is what you see it as, so the size that you see the image as. For the last part of your notes for this video lecture, I'd like you to complete these practice problems using the equations given. Um, so for the first one, you're going to be using the image to the left. Um, what is the actual diameter of the red blood cell? Um, here you're given three pieces of information. You are given the scale. You can use a ruler, pause the video, and measure the scale bar size. And then you can also use a ruler to measure the image size. 
and then you will be solving for specimen size in this case. The rest of them, all of the information needed is given in the equation itself. Um, and in some cases, you may actually need to use both equations or a combination of both equations. So please do your best, persevere, and work out what you can with these practice problems. We will be reviewing these tomorrow before we go on with our um, lab and our magnification practice. So do your best and come with questions tomorrow. Thanks.